Hello and welcome back to another Code Code tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be talking about dependency injection. We're going to talk about what dependency injection is, the value of dependency injection, and the benefits that we gain from it, and how we can apply dependency injection in our iOS applications. If you're a new iOS developer just getting started, make sure you check out my iOS Development Fundamentals course available on both Skillshare and on Udemy. If you sign up with my Skillshare link, you'll get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. And if you sign up with my Udemy link, you'll get the course for 50% off. This course is great for beginners with 20 video tutorials and over three hours of video tutorial content. It's a great course to get you up and running and learning the basic fundamental skills to become a great iOS developer. So open up Xcode and let's get started. So dependency injection is a big word for really a simple concept. And that concept is allowing the object to receive the dependencies that it needs or requires rather than having an object create the dependencies itself. And so what we'll really do is illustrate this through uh, an example. Uh, we'll start off with a bad example that does not use dependency injection. And then we'll use dependency injection and build up from there to see all the benefits and improvements and safety in our code that we gain from using dependency injection. So I've set up a, a bad example here for us to kind of look through and see how we can improve this. So I made a class called Programmer. And Programmer has three properties that are being implicitly unwrapped um, with the exclamation mark here. And that's programming language, the name property, and the computer used. And there is a function called catchphrase. So for the programmer, um, depending on what the catchphrase is, which is determined by the programming language, that's going to return a string that just says something quirky. And let's take a look at the other two parts of this. So the programming language is simply an enum. We have Swift, Objective-C, Java, Python, and JavaScript. And the computer is just a class that has a property that's implicitly unwrapped called operating system and a method to print the operating system to the console. So those are very, very basic ex examples here, but more importantly, how these are not being injected, but rather are being defined on the class is part of the problem, and how they're being used down here in our view did load of our view controller is dangerous. So what are we doing? We're instantiating a programmer, we're calling the catchphrase method, and then we are creating a computer, setting an operating system, and then assigning that computer back to the programmer's computer, and then printing that out here. So, okay, this might happen in a real life situation, but what would happen if we forgot to make this assignment right here, but we still call programmer.computerused.printOperatingSystem? So let's run that and see what we get. So right away we crash, we get a runtime crash with a fatal error, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. And it's because we forgot to assign our implicitly unwrapped optional right here. So what if we use dependency injection instead? How could we improve this code? And Xcode actually tries to give you a hint about this. So like if we don't implicitly unwrap this optional, right? And we just say var computer used, Right away, Xcode tells us that this class has no initializers. So what Xcode's trying to tell you is that, hey, if you're not going to implicitly unwrap this, you need to define an initializer and inject this parameter through the constructor or through the initializer, and then save that injected value to the property. So basically, Xcode is saying do this. Init, computer used, computer, self.computerused equals computer user. I have to fix that. It should be this. And then if we build again, we're going to get another error. And that other error says you are missing an argument for the parameter computer used in the call. So then what happens is we have to go ahead and inject this computer property into programmer like this and then we build again and you'll see that we have no compilation errors and we just used dependency injection right here as simple as that by injecting this dependency in because this programmer in our example has a dependency for the computer so now we can create that computer 
outside of the programmer, inject the dependency in, and it can be used from inside this programmer class here. So what if we take that concept and apply it for the name and for the programming language? So we can simply do this. We can repeat that pattern and we can do name, which will be a string, and programming language, which will be a programming language type, an enum. And uh, what we can do here is assign these values back, self.name equals name, and self.programming language equals programming language. So we gain some additional benefits uh, from, from injecting in our dependencies. One, now that we've done this, we can define these variables to be constants with let. And we can change the type. We can change uh, from a var or a mutating type to an immutable type, or in a constant, which will be let. So right then and there, we can lock in our name, and we can't change it from outside of our class programmer. And the other benefit that we gain is this catchphrase logic here. So this is a switch statement. But because we had a possibility for the catchphrase to be nil, if we had forgotten to. Um, assign a programming language, we had to have a default case. Well, now that we have injected in our dependency that can never be nil, we don't need this default case anymore because it's always going to have a value. So that's another benefit we just gained from dependency injection right there. So let's go ahead and update our constructor here for the two new parameters that we added. So I'll add in the name, and then I'll add in my programming language used. Let me build it again here to get the uh, little, no, it's not gonna help me. Uh, let's copy it. Programming language. And I will use Swift. So let's build this one more time, and build succeed. So let's take our newfound knowledge of dependency injection and apply that to the operating system property on the computer. Rather than assign that property here, we're going to inject it into the constructor via constructor injection or initializer injection. And so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to jump up to my computer class here. And I'm already going to try to set from my var to a let. And I'm going to build and I'm going to fail because I have no initializers for this constant. It can never be nil. Um, so by removing that, I'm setting myself up for using dependency injection. So I create my initializer. I create the operating system parameter that I need to pass in. And finally, I assign that to the operating system. I need to go ahead and update my initializer down below. Let's do that real fast. So I scroll back down here and we can just say, that this is going to be Mac OS. And I can delete this line right here. So that's great. Now, there's one other benefit from this. Now, in this example, um, in this class, I'm just printing the operating system out to the console in this method here. I'm not doing anything to it. So in terms of encapsulation being a benefit of dependency injection, um, because I don't want to expose this property maybe outside of this class, now I can do this. I can say, hey, this is a private property and the value will be injected in. Nothing outside of the computer class can interact or use the operating system unless I provide a method to do that or I create an internal or a public access modifier for the operating system property. But until I need to do that, I can make this private, and this makes this safe. Nothing can really do anything with this property. It cannot read it, talk to it, or touch it in any way, even though it's a let, it's a let variable. That's another benefit I gain, because I don't have to assign the, the property operating system outside of the constructor like I had to before. I can just inject it. And because I have to inject the operating system parameter, there is no possible way it can ever be nil because it has to have a value. 
I didn't mark it as an optional property. I'm not saying it's going to be implicitly unwrapped uh, like we had to before, where if I had forgotten to assign a value to the property, like something like this, then it could be nil. There's no possible way. If I tried to do a different initializer, like something like this, basically a default initializer, because of how I've structured my code, there, there's no other initializer. I have to use this initializer and I have to inject these values. So as you can see, there are many benefits to dependency injection. It's a simple but powerful concept. And uh, right away, the, the biggest obvious reason is the uh, dependencies are clearly defined. Now, after we uh, implemented a more dependency injection friendly uh, interface, our initializer takes a computer, it takes a name, it takes a programming language, I don't have to assign these properties manually like I was doing before, where if I forgot to assign one and then perform some operation, I would get a runtime crash on an implicitly unwrapped optional. So now it's explicit. Everything here is clearly defined. There's no guesswork involved for the programmer. As you saw, we encapsulated our code. We were able to lock down in the computer class uh, the property by making it private. It no longer needed to be exposed outside of this class right now because there's no need for it to be. The value can be ejected in. Um, and now we didn't cover it in this tutorial, but this also improves testability. We can mock or stub out classes that maybe conform to a common protocol. If you think of a network manager class, we could create a protocol that maybe does something or downloads something, and then we could create a mock class that conforms to that protocol that might do something uh, in a simulated environment, and then we can run tests against it by injecting in the protocol or the uh, interface instead of the concrete implementation. Our code can be decoupled. We can have our code be more modularized, compartmentalized, and not have to be tightly integrated because everything that is needed is injected in through the constructor. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to Code Pro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure to follow Code Pro on Facebook, Twitter, Skillshare, and Udemy. And let me know in the comment section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.